All right, so and finally, before before we get to Adam Cole, which was really cool, really nice surprise, got to remind everybody, of course, Zaslow Show 2.0, everything Zaslow Show 2.0, including It's Still Real to Me every Saturday, is brought to us by Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. If you're dealing with a personal injury, you've been involved in an accident, 800-747-FREE. That's 800-747-3733. Title sponsor of everything Zaslow Show 2.0. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys have been with me since day number one. I'm not going to steer you in the wrong direction. If you support the show, you also support our sponsors. And if you're dealing with an injury, you got to make sure that Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys, they get you the money that you deserve. So again, 800-747-FREE. That's 800-747-3733. Uh, Joey here, let's, uh, let's touch a little on Adam Cole. Really nice surprise. Awesome. Everyone was so super cool. jacked up. Crowd was already on fire from the Moxley Hangman match. And then you're bringing out Adam Cole to me. Uh, that was really unexpected, really fun. Seemed like a really heartfelt uh, promo, if you will, from Adam Cole. He was clearly in Britt Baker, who was his girlfriend, sent out a message later on that night that essentially reiterated the things that he was saying, that he wasn't able to leave the house. He was only able to leave the house to go to rehab, major head injury, uh, lots of vomiting, like he said, waking yeah. up in the middle of the night with panic attacks. And I mean, my God, what some of these guys do the way they put their body on the line for us. Uh, I'm a big and for Adam a long time and a long time too. Like, I think what people don't also realize is like the Adam Coles of the world. You only know him now because he was in WWE, but the yeah. dude's been doing it for 20 years. You know, yeah, and how do you like... think he was getting people's attention was by probably doing some crazy shit. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Adam Cole, uh, I've always loved him from the very first time I saw him in NXT. I'm like, that guy right there is cool as hell. Uh, so I'm really glad that Adam Cole is back. I know there are a lot of detractors out there, but based on the reaction that uh, on Adam Cole. Yeah, man. Uh, absolutely. Weird. Yeah. Like my pal, uh, my pal Nick Costos uh, from uh, You Bet You Bet on Odyssey, who used to come on Zaslow's show when I was on the radio every week. He's a huge pro wrestling fan. He He does not like Adam Cole whatsoever. There's, there's I used to work with Costos. I don't buy it. He's, there's he's a lot of people he's, like he's that. Trying to be, he's trying to be contrarian. So? He's trying to get be contrarian to get a rise out of you. Okay. Don't buy it. All right. All right. Uh, but I, I love Adam Cole. I can't wait for Kyle O'Reilly to get back, who I'm also a huge fan of, you know. But I would say, look, Adam Cole is a phenomenal heel. But right now, he's clearly babyface. He comes back. Yeah. Everyone's excited for a return. You're babyface whenever you return. It's what you do right after the return that's going to determine what you're going to do. Uh, but I would say, listen, the crowd is so hot for Adam Cole right now. Let's do something big with him. You know, strike MJF. while the iron. But, yeah, that's something big. Strike while the iron's hot. And, and if Adam Cole is going to go after someone like MJF, look, the crowd, there's a good portion of the crowd that always likes MJF. That music hits. Everyone gets super excited because you know it's going to be a lot of fun. But... If you want to make sure that you got the crowd booing MJF during a match, I mean, yeah. Adam Cole could be your guy right now. Everyone was will be that, cheering for Adam Cole. Let me ask you, was that the best fake retirement since Mark Henry? It was good. It was good. It was really good. Like, I had a moment there where I'm like, oh, it's done. Sasha Banks had a good fake retirement a few years ago, too. I don't even remember her fake. Oh, retirement. maybe maybe it wasn't that good then. If, if or maybe I missed it. it. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. But I well, I mean, Mark Henry's was the best ever. I think uh -huh. right that yeah, it had to good. be where he can't where he uh you know was wearing the pink jacket yeah. and he well that, that he, meme was out there all week this week yeah. because yeah. of Adam Cole. Uh, yeah. yeah, really good fake retirement. Good news, I got bad news. The bad news is for everyone in the locker room at AEW. And he's and also that was an uh definitely an example of AEW getting it right with the production, just like. Hard cam zoomed in, his head's down. He's like, The bad news, I got bad news, but it's not bad news for me. People who are listening can't see, but I did like my, I brought my head up and stared right into the camera. It was that, it was just really well done. And, and again, you know, he was really emotional because for, I don't even remember how long he's been out now, but like, it seemed like there's a legit chance he may never wrestle again, which would suck. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, you know, it's really, it's just cool to see him back, right? We were just talking about fake head injuries. Mm -hmm. it, this guy was almost, he almost had to stop. You know, we've had guys, of, you know, Corey Graves had to retire because of, you know, concussion stuff. We've had guys get knocked out due to injuries, neck injuries, Big E. We don't know if he's ever going to wrestle again. So it's good to see one of these guys that's going through it come back. You got anything else quickly on AEW for me? I mean... Well, we just mentioned. I know you were way into rain. Oh, MJF, yes. So, well, obviously, so the guy that so Daniel Bryan has to do the um, He's you know, through the, the first stage. Uh, he beat Take a Shitta, which I right. gotta tell you, boy, MJF. He uh, 
I mean, he delivers the low blows, man. I mean, so that's what I was going to ask. Okay. So we just almost got through the entire dynamite and almost didn't talk about the champion. Isn't that a bad thing? He never fights, but even the segment, even the segment, like, and maybe it's a product of him feuding right now with Daniel Bryan. But his gimmick, like I, we get. I know he's like trying to get heat. Um, but he's like, great at it. It's it's just like childish insults now, though. Like all the time, um, which is I guess is fine. It's like mom jokes and like take a shit. I want to see the champion wrestle more, man. And and, and konnichiwa and showing up <laughs> i did laugh at, at that though. and and showing up in colorado with the hottest girl in colorado who's actually an indie wrestler like what are we doing with mjf right now it, I, like, I think part it, of the problem is people want to see the champion it, wrestle yeah but even but even if he's not going to wrestle like it is the point of the aw champion to elevate takashita like why does this guy deserve to have a one a head-to-head promo situation with mjf well i think he's sticking the, around for a little bit is he sticking around i think he is. well there, the rumors that this guy's getting pushed hard right but what has he done to earn this time in the ring with the champion yeah I don't and what does that say about how they value the champion like it's just such a weird thing like i don't know what they're doing I don't think it's about valuing the champion there. I think it's about they know that MJF is going to be able to throw the really good barbs at this guy, which he did. But I think that's kind of what it is. Is there any value? I I don't know. I'm not saying that there's value to it. I'm saying I think that's what it is. I just, I I think, yeah, he's got to wrestle. I guess that's it at the end of the day. He's got to do something because just coming out every week and running down Daniel Bryan and whoever Daniel Bryan's wrestling, it's getting old. It's getting old. the The champion can't just be a talker. And he's as good as anyone. Unless the champion's now, gotta get into it. I'll say this. I'll go as far and we compared it to Roman, right? Because Roman never fights. If Roman was by himself, yeah, but at least without, he fights every pay-per-view, right? And he has and he has the bloodline, right? So Got he's always involved. He's involved in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. MJF is involved in nothing but other than the worst than Roman's in, fighting once a month. Right. He's fighting at pay-per-views. Have right. Well, they don't have pay-per-views. They don't have pay-per-views. Right. right. So, or they have four pay-per-views a year or whatever. MJF, you know how many times MJF fought last year in the year 2022? Like three, right? Nine. Like three? Nine. Oh. That's less than once a month. Yeah. It's not, it's not great. And like, I'm starting to wonder, did they push him to the title too quickly? Well, I'm, there I'm been... willing to let it breathe. I'm willing to see what becomes of the whole, you know, Danielson thing. I'm, I'm willing to see it. Not that any of us think that Danielson's taking the belt on. See, that's that's, that's where what the problem m- yeah. lies. Yeah. Is that we all know we don't buy it. We don't we buy all it. know Danielson's not going to take the belt off of him. Will the match be good? It'll probably be really good. But he's not going to take the belt off of him. Yeah. And the build mm-hmm. is going to be so long. Like it was one thing when you had the five stages of Jericho, Jericho having to work through all of them to get to MJF. I know it wasn't for a title, but you know, it was a grudge match kind of deal. All right, when they eventually get to meet each other, we don't know who's going to win. And if I remember correctly, I believe MJF won. And then they fought again and Jericho won. But right. it, this time around, we're going to have the whole long wait and the buildup when we know Danielson's not winning the title from him. Well, so- you know. It's crazy though. I, you know, Tony Khan has makes weird decisions. I didn't think Punk would win the title so quickly, but he did. So I don't know when he came in. So I, I don't know. I, I guess you never know. Um, Give me a little something on Rampage. Oh, by the way, WWE. Yeah, yeah. Oh, also the 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 last thing from Dynamite is that Jungle Boy and Hook do have a tag name, and it's yeah. Jungle. It's Jungle Hook. <laughs> That's Just, funny. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. So Rampage. First off, is it weird that Jericho still does commentary for Rampage? I find that a little weird. Like he. He did a bunch of commentary during COVID when they had to pre-tape yeah. a bunch of stuff. And then they just kept him on Rampage when Rampage started. I think it's weird that he's an active wrestler, but he's on commentary on Fridays. I think I don't they know. just like him involved. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he's great on it. I just, it's weird. Um, they started the show with Juice Robinson in the ring, which was a good move because it's an hour show. Juice Robinson versus Darby Allen for the TNT title. Okay. Good, good match. Darby retains. Juice Robinson's awesome. Juice Robinson, former IWGP US title mm-hmm. IWGP tag title bullet club member he's been in he's had three matches in AEW he's lost all three really why did why does Tony Khan do this he came in he fought Moxley for number one contender lost uh fought Samoa Joe at Ring of Honor for the TV title lost fought Darby Allen for the TBS title lost that shit happens in AEW like where's Ruby Riot like that stuff happens well she was in the main event 
on Rampage? On Rampage. And it was really? fucking nuts. And it was insane. Okay. So I'll, I'm was just, it? Uh, let me fly through here. The claim segment was awesome, but I don't know if you saw this because people, because it's a pre tape show. Max Caster during the taping fucked up his rap. Oh, I heard about this. And, and went to the back and re restarted his rap. Yeah. That's um, but uh, the highlight of this was not even the acclaimed, it was the ass boys came out. And the lot, one of the lines of the year was, the only reason you're popular and the only reason you're popular is because you stole our dad. <laughs> so <laughs> That's so good. So good. Um, I actually was wondering, like, I think Billy Gunn is he might be just as over now as he was in DX. But <laughs> DX as a whole was over. But Billy Gunn right now is so over. I, I always thought Billy Gunn. I'm look, they were all over DX, but I, I always thought Billy Gunn was the least over of all yep. the guys in DX. Yep. Um House of Black actually fought a match that was cool. They fought. So this is weird. There's House of Black, but apparently now Malachi Black and Brody King are a tag team within House of Black called the Kings of the Black Throne. No, I thought Brody King and Buddy Matthews are that team. No, not on this. It then maybe it's just then it's just interchangeable, maybe. But then I don't understand. But they, again, here then we why go. Do they AEW. Have, why do they have a separate here, name then? Here we go, AEW. Can I get an explanation of why? Yeah, they're being I'm pretty sure Kings it's Brody King and Buddy Matthews that are the tag team with that name. Not on Rampage. Not on okay. Rampage. Right. Malachi Black needs to be in the title picture. That's right. He's a star. He's freaking jacked. That's he what I always loved about him in NXT. And Brody when he King was the too. champion, I was like, Alistair Black looks like a champion. Yeah. He looks yeah. like he can kill you. Um, so we had that. That was cool. Eddie Kingston. I, it seems like the House oh, Eddie of Black... Kingston and Ortiz are going to feud. That's very obvious. Right. right. And it seems like House of Black maybe is wants Ortiz in that. Well, so what Black? happened there? Because I know leading up to it, Eddie Kingston was like, I'm getting tired of you. You better be so there. So Julia now. Hart and Julia don't, Hart and Buddy. Don't, don't play with me. Better Julia be there. Hart, don't play with Julia, me. Julia Hart and Buddy Matthews come out to, you know, whatever. Julia Hart gets in the ring. Uh, Eddie Kingston doesn't realize that she's the one behind him. He turns around. He's about to hit her. And then Ortiz stops him. And he's like, you're going to hit a woman dog. Yeah. You're going to hit a woman dog. And then it leads to them losing. So, and then Ortiz. They're going to fight now. Okay. There was a great moment though, where Eddie Kingston did like the cross-legged uh, Indian like seat style sit. He was doing Malachi crisscross Black applesauce. Does. He did crisscross applesauce to Malachi Black. And then Malachi Black did it right back to him. And then they just sat crisscross applesauce and stared at each other. It was kind of cute. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden, Paul Walter Hauser was on TV for some I, reason. I don't even and I don't know, know who what... the hell that is. Like, who but he shoot? took a massive guitar shot from Jeff Jarrett. So really? it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, like I saw the promo and it's like a picture of him. And it's like, he's going to talk on from like, the hell is he anyway? Yeah. Well, he took, a, he took, he took a guitar to the face okay but that's something that you promo that's like i can't i, I gotta tune in i gotta see this guy talk yeah i don't get it hey they he? promoted him hey hey that's what take that diddy son you didn't get a promo but paul walter hauser did um what show is he in who is he he's an actor he's he's been in a ton of movies you'd know he's is one he of those guys Kai? yes okay that's where i recognize him. yes all right of all the things to recognize him but from who, that's hilarious but who cares still he, who cares? but he's been in a billion things you see his face you know who he is you may not know his name right off the bat but he's one of those guys all right all right the main event rampage does this weird thing with their main events i don't know if you wouldn't the last time you watched rampage all the it's way it's enough of the talk it it's time, it's time for the main, for the main event Event, I like it. It's his stick. That, I is like that it. all? Is that all? Mark Henry is in the AEW yeah, for? That's his only thing. Yeah. So the it time was a win the talk is over. It's it was time. A, yeah, this was a street fight between Anna J and Tay Mello versus okay. Ruby Riot and Willow Nightingale. All right. And <laughs> within two within two minutes into the match, Ruby Soho has a trash can over her head. Getting a double stomp to the face by Tay Mello comes out completely covered in blood. Just com like really like whole crimson mask covered in blood. Oh, um, you know what? That's the picture that I saw on Twitter. Like I didn't even recognize who it was. Yeah, yeah. completely covered in blood. Hockey sticks, like barbed wire. I don't know. No, not barbed wire. Um, Thumbtacks. Uh, at the end of the match, by the way. Ruby Soho was shaking. Like, yeah, she was actually in pain. Was like, you could see she was like shaking. She's lost but, so much blood. But the spot that was 
clearly not intended to be this way. Willow Nightingale did a sit out power bomb to Anna J off of the ramp onto a table, but missed the Willow Nightingale went through the table and Anna J just got slammed on the floor. Yeah. It was bad looking. Jesus. It was all right. But the watch. match itself was insane for a women's hardcore match like that. You don't see it much. The right, blood and the violence and all that. And in the midst of all of that, of course, JR can't help but be like, Anna J is a really attractive young lady. Like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> oh, his Brett, He's doing his Brett Musburger impression? What's somebody's got to somebody's got to take that guy out back. I love JR from back in the day. Got to take him out behind the shed. It's time. But it was a crazy <laughs> match. It was a crazy match. All right. Worth, worth going back and watching, I think. All right. Uh, I want to talk about SmackDown last night. Like, like Raw was good, but SmackDown had all the action, man. Like, SmackDown was great. You got anything special from, like, the only thing I would bring up to you, well, there's a couple things well, Raw, a couple real things. quick. Yeah. All right, so there's a couple things I'll mention real quick. I don't understand the Alexa Bliss Uncle Howdy segment. Like, Alexa Bliss is just standing on the table there, and Uncle Howdy comes out, it's like, you know, and she says that she's in control. And then they just went to commercial and it was over. Like, that's all we That's what they did, la- but that's also what they did. So this is why I think Uncle Howdy and the guy who attacked Bray Wyatt are two different people. Okay. Because the first time Uncle Howdy came out and like revealed himself, he did the same thing. He just came out and kind of did this. And then they went to commercial. And remember LA Knight was like, what the, what's this? What's going on here? It's the same thing he just did to Alexa Bliss. The other guy, different mask, came in the ring and attacked Bray. Okay. So that's, but either way, yeah, I, I don't know what they're doing there. I but don't know it, what that was. Uh, I thought it was I I was I'm okay with it though. Yeah, I'm like, okay. I, I like I what Alexa heard, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh R- Rhea Ripley. Okay. Rhea Ripley kicks the shit out of Candice LeRae. Yeah. I'm telling you, we talked about this last week. I would love there to, I I would love for Rhea Ripley to win the women's battle royal. I'm sure she is the popular pick, but I gotta tell you, I really don't see a scenario where she is not in the Royal Rumble and Beth Phoenix eliminates her. Well, I got a, I got an I think interesting we're thousand percent headed there. I got an interesting prediction that was made by a WWE wrestler. Let me hear about no, no, it's going to be in Big Dirt, not Big okay. Dirt. Okay, because yeah, I, I would love for Rhea to win it, but I, I'm telling yeah. you, Beth Phoenix is going to cost that match. You're going to love, you're going to love this prediction. All by right, the way. all right, I, and I don't know how legit it is, it's, but you're going to love this prediction. Okay, and um, sticking with yeah. Judgment Day, Judgment Day beats. Uh, they were the whole profits. show. They were the whole show, right? They should be. Judgment Day beats Street Profits. Dominic doesn't want to have to enter the match. He gets forced to because Finn Balor is hurt. And, uh, you know, you got to remember, he's coming off Miz TV where he's a hardened criminal now. All right. The best was Miz is like, you're wearing a $500 (laughs) off-white flannel. (laughs) Oh, is it true? I heard you were in jail for 12 hours. Yeah. (laughs) It's Uh, so good. I I love it. I wrote in my notes. Like Rhea is awesome, yeah. but the judgment day belongs to Dominic right now. <laughs> and so he ends up, I think he got, did he get the pin? I think he got the pin. Uh, I don't know. All but right, are they doing, way. is judgment day basically like new day? Like where anyone can, no, no. I mean like where anyone can defend, like challenge for the titles. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I think so. But I mean, Dominic's got to be in the match. I think they're going to sell that, that Finn is hurt. So Dominic's got to keep going, you know? Right. Um, So that's cool that we're going to get that at Royal Rumble where you get heel faction versus heel faction. You got the group that runs Monday nights. You got the group that essentially runs Friday nights. So I I did. Are they going to drop the Raw? Is it just for the Raw titles or is it for both? It's a great question. I don't know. I don't know if they've announced it. Maybe they drop, maybe they drop the, maybe they drop the titles. I don't know. It's just Raw. If it's Raw. That's a great question, but. Uh, yeah, so I thought that was awesome. Obviously, Dominic ends up getting the win at the very end of the night. That was cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, all I, the only thing else, the only other, I had two other things from Raw. One was it just feels like they are leading us towards U.S. title elimination chamber. Yeah, definitely. Theory, yeah. Rollins, Lashley, Dolph, Ali, and the six man. But still, we're a ways away, though. We're, a, we're over a month away from that. Solo, solo, six man solo. Just calling it. Okay. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that makes sense. Solo's the best. Solo's yeah. the best. I think I've come around to Solo's the best. Oh, and he also um, won on Monday night too. He beat Ziggler, right? Yes. Yeah. Um. Now, the opening of Raw. Triple H was trolling everybody, right? What was the opening of Raw again? Baron Corbett or JBL oh. coming out to talk to Kevin Owens and uh-huh. having a match with Baron, like Baron Corbett. I think with the, all the Vince news, Triple H was like, you know what Vince would do tonight? He'd have JBL go out there. <laughs> I want everyone because I had people text me like, oh, Vince is back in control. 
you know? <laughs> and I was like, you know what? No, he's not. I think this is a troll by Triple H to be like, yeah, guys, calm down. I'm going to do what you think Vince would do to make you think Vince is back. And then and the it, bloodline obviously attacks. But I just think they don't have anything for Baron Corbin. So it's like, let's just feed him to Kevin Owens. Yeah. Well, you know? Yeah, I mean, let's maybe get him some new ring gear. Maybe get him away from JBL. Maybe get him in the gym. Like, yeah, JBL like, doesn't do it for me, man. He doesn't do it for me. Well, this current version is terrible. Yeah, doesn't do it terrible. for me. This whole thing, yeah. But I thought that was just like a troll by Triple H. It's what it felt like. SmackDown, though, unless you got anything else for Raw? You got anything else from Raw? Um, Raw was good, but I, I think those are the main points that I, I had thought. Raw, I, I thought I think overall the the week was just incredible. Very so good. I thought Raw. It's I think part of it is like Raw. It's it just seems so long ago now because there's yeah. been five other great shows and yeah. all this news. You know, there was a lot of really good stuff on Raw. It just seems like two weeks ago now. SmackDown was freaking fantastic last night. It's always good. It started off with a big with it with a good old fashioned Haas fight. And it makes me crazy. Who knows if it's true? It's dirt sheet kind of stuff. But like this idea that Vince McMahon uh, had soured on Gunther, that dude, I, I think he's going to be an all time great intercontinental champion. He is phenomenal. I think he might already be. He's pretty awesome. Yep. Like Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman is what he is. But shit, man, that match must have been 15 minutes. You're putting together a 15 minute match with Braun Strowman and people are coming out of it saying this match was awesome. Like, you're a really good worker, man. Because Braun yeah. Strowman, it's like, let's, you know, quick and get to the point. That match was awesome. Uh, yeah. Gunther wins, which is obviously, you know, what you needed. It's not as if, you know, Braun didn't look strong. It's just Gunther's amazing. By the way, I remember one of the big dirt things a couple weeks ago was Brock Gunther at Mania? I hope so. Gunther's in the Royal Rumble. He did. A, he cut a promo backstage about how now he's looking ahead to the Rumble and taking so care maybe of the again, Rumble. Though, remember when they did the face Bro to face with Brock and Keith Lee, and it was yep. awesome in the Royal yep. Rumble. And they never I think we get. On I think maybe we get Brock Gunther at the Rumble. That would be cool to yeah. set up a feud for them. Yeah, that's forward. how they set up Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior back yeah, in Royal yeah. Rumble '91. Brock Gunther would be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, for a while we thought it was going to be Lashley again when he comes back, but it looks like Lashley's getting back with the Hurt business, right? You know? That would be cool like... if you get a little Lesnar good. Oh, that was on Raw. Was that on Raw or SmackDown? No, on Raw, MVP pr uh, proposition Lashley. Like, it said that he got Hurt at business he... is getting back and they want Lashley back with and him. And he and MVP said that he got Adam Pierce to reinstate him. That's cool. Yeah. And so yeah, that yeah. they're. Right, so, okay. Anyways, but uh, yes, Gunther's awesome. Match was Gunther's awesome. Good. Gunther's awesome. You know, it's a funny thing. So they, they do the whole, they, they put up the graphic for the Royal Rumble. It's, you know, they show like the six guys who have already declared for the Royal. This was right before Mysterio declared for Royal Rumble. And they got the six guys who have declared for the Royal Rumble. And that always gets me, man, where it's, why have only six guys declared? Like, are you in that? Like, are you in the locker room there? And you're like, you're not sure if you want to be in the Royal Rumble. Why don't you go declare? There's 24 spaces open. Why haven't you declared yet for Royal yeah. Rumble? That always well, also like you don't want to be in the main event of WrestleMania. But also, like, didn't they just like? And I know it was a way of them like turning Hit Row heel, but like they had a qualifying match for the Royal Rumble. Like when there, that's never happened before either. Has it has to it? have happened? Yeah, I think so. That has to have happened. Qualifying not, not to be in the Royal Rumble. It's not common, but it definitely yeah. happens. Yeah. So that always gets me. Like what? what more guys aren't like they're on the fence whether or not they want to be in the Royal Rumble. They don't. We're two weeks away. You know what else was funny was that same. I know I'm going back weeks now, but like the same week that they had the Royal Rumble qualifier match, they also had a match with Kofi Kingston and Santos Escobar, where every time one of them got thrown over the rope, Michael Cole was like, "If this was the Royal Rumble, that would be an elimination." Right, but it's not. It's everyone, like, everyone knows the rules for Royal Rumble. Everyone gets yeah, it. it. was just we've like, been what, doing this for thirty-five right years. Everybody knows the Royal Rumble and how it yeah. works. Uh, Bray Wyatt claims that he is everything, including Uncle Howie. What howdy? What is he talking about? Where are uh, we? Although, I was, that was my. I had that written here. Where are we at on Bray? Where? What are you feeling about Bray right now? Well, I, well, obviously I'm excited because I don't know what the hell a Mountain Dew Pitch Black matches. All right. Well, ugh, yeah. But I but mean, he also now declared that the Royal Rumble is going to be his rebirth. So uh, whatever the hell that well, because now he's saying things from his old gimmick. Yeah, right? he's well, like, I'm well, the eater of worlds. Well, and here's what I didn't love. Uh, well, well, I guess because he's saying that he's everything. He's claiming he's everything. Right, so but he's, he's the on the Eater of Worlds. But Eater of Worlds was what he used to say. The the rocking chair is what he used to do. Like, right. It's all and also the QR stuff. code that appeared this week apparently went to a link of the Firefly Funhouse. 
So Didn't he's see that. He, yeah. Missed so that. he's doing a whole. That. He's everything, and I I don't know. He's he's claiming he's so it makes sense. You got the rocking chair. You got the eater of worlds. You got the flyer five fun house. He and he's also Uncle Howdy. He's everything. Is it going to be underwhelming if Bo Dallas is Uncle Howdy? No, I think I think it'd be cool if it were Bo Dallas. Yeah. I think, but Uncle the, only, I think the only way it's are they, aren't they implying it's somebody, that we have no idea who they are. If they t- like if it's if it's some like AEW when they turned off the lights and Satnam Singh was in the ring when they put it back on, I was like, <laughs> who, who the fuck is this guy? Call like, him by his name, Zaz. His, his name, name is Greater Kali. Greater Kali. Uh like that would be underwhelming. No, I think if it's Bo Dallas, it's cool. Right, but aren't they sort of implying that Uncle Howdy has like this control over people? He has control over Bray. And Alexa, I guess. Well, no, like, Alexa's telling him that she's in control. Yeah, but then he came out. And he said, "You think you have control?" Yeah, she said, "I believe her." She said, "She's but, in control." But if, but if Bo, so are we saying Bo Dallas has control? Well, he's not going to be Bo Dallas. Well, he's not Bo Dallas. He could be both. I mean, Bray. I mean, he he could be both. Bray has been many things. He's everything. Bray is everything. So he's everything. And so whatever, whatever bro- that means. Bo is his brother. So, you know, I mean, by blood, Bo is also everything. That's right. And is he also IRS then? Oh yeah, yeah. IRS. If you're in the wired. Rotunda family, you're IRS. Also IRS. Uh, you must have been pleased, just like I was. Where you're we going? Uh, we're we're gonna get Charlotte Flair versus Sonya Deville at Royal Rumble. Yes, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah, I, I'm happy no, about it too. I'm just happy that that wasn't a throwaway, and yeah. I'm glad that Sonya's getting something. She's great. Dude, letting her do something. She's great. And I like that they're like doing the backstage with her and Pierce and they're all they're like kind of like wink wink nudge nudge to them being uh, together. you know the authority together yep. and her being like I know how to get this done I'm gonna you know like that um yes very excited yep, I'm a big Sonya fan to, of Sonya yep. look and 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 this is one of those things unlike you know in let's say W where it's MJF and D Brian Danielson and we know Brian Danielson's not gonna win we're we're not excited about it because we've seen it that story a million times. Daniel Bryan work underdog working his way up to win a title, whatever he's going to lose. This is exciting because it's someone getting an opportunity who hasn't. Yeah, Sonya's not going to beat her, but I right. You know, it's it's getting her more exposure and yeah. She's... And you know what? Maybe one day she will, but yeah. we'll never know unless we get a feud where she's in this spot. And look, right? it's not as if Charlotte's not going to look. Uh, Charlotte's the best ever. It's not like Charlotte's not going to make her look great. You know. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, I'm really pleased with that, man. Cause... Yeah, like Sonya Deville can't beat Charlotte, but why can't Sonya Deville beat like not that this is going to happen, but like, why couldn't she beat Bianca Belair? Yep. Like, why couldn't she be the raw champion right now? Like anybody yep. could be right now. It's all up in the air. Bianca Belair is great, but like, you know, so yes, I was very happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and as far as the main event goes, uh, Sammy and Kevin Owens. So we, we know it ends up being, uh, you know, a no contest because the Usos and Solo were actually there. All right, Shmuley was lied to by Paul Heyman. Mm. And well, well, I have some, I have some conspiracy theories. I've been thinking about this. Well, the thing that stands out to everyone was right where so th- they beat the hell out of KO, and Sammy was super conflicted. Like he didn't, he didn't like how bad they beat him. He wanted to win the match for sure, but he didn't seem to like how badly they beat him. Well. Was he mad about how badly they beat him, or is he mad because they didn't allow him to take care of his business? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you could have that conversation, but I, to me, it. it you know, like I he, I, like, I agree. I think there's a, a he's a, it's a conflicted thing there. Yeah, for sure. I think yeah. he was conflicted, man. Yeah. Um, my only thing with this is that everything with the bloodline has been so like, um, what's going to happen, mm-hmm. right? We, we just we've been trying to figure it out, and that's what's been great about the bloodline. They're leaning so heavily into Sammy getting kicked out of the bloodline that I'm thinking something else is happening here. Well, I think like, I know where you're headed and let me hear it. And I and I so based on these interactions that I've been seeing with Heyman and Sami Zayn, I think Heyman might get kicked out of the bloodline. Why? I think Heyman there's this we I think Heyman is maybe like playing little games, right? So the the tribal chief the tribal chief told them not to show up you know he told them not to show up but why they show who who told them to show up we don't know that roman reigns told them to show up right 
maybe Heyman told them that Roman. Like, I think there's something here where it's like Heyman is maybe planting seeds to play Sammy and Roman against each other because Heyman's meal ticket is Roman Reigns, but he sees what's happening with Sammy. All right, so he he's trying to set up Sammy to get Sammy kicked out because he's not going to betray Roman. Right, but he in the process he is betraying Roman because yeah. he's going behind because his back and connected. trying to set up Sammy. Okay, I'll keep an eye maybe, on that. I mean, I I don't think it's going to happen, but it just seems too obvious that Sammy is getting kicked out. Well, the direction that I thought you were going in was, yes, they are leaning so heavily into this, and I don't believe that the bloodline is going to end or that that this angle is going to end anytime soon because man, like they're, they're printing a new t-shirt every single week. You know, they're making so much money, but if they're leaning so heavily into this, it leads me in the direction of Sammy's going to be in the main event at WrestleMania. Yeah. Like, you well, know, I think that's what most people are assuming. Right. And, and here's what we also haven't considered. Could Sammy win the Royal rumble? Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Like, could it be now? This would be kind of cool because, like, we don't know yet. It, w w like, is the rumble? We don't know where where the placement of the matches are yet, right? But like, we never know it, until it happens. We never know. We never know in advance. Sure. Right. Okay. So, is it possible? I would say if the men's are main eventing, then yeah, it's possible that Sammy wins it. Yeah. Is it? But like, is it possible that Roman Reigns, to your point about him being conflicted about how bad they beat up Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns beats the shit out of Kevin Owens so bad. And then the bloodline attacks him and beats the shit out of him so bad that Sammy's like, I'm entering the rumble. I'm going to fight you now because you beat up my best friend. Like that would be a cool story. The cool way to do it. I just, like, I, I think like Sammy ends up being a surprise entrant. And then on SmackDown when they're like, what, what was that? What was that? He's like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not about this. It'd be this amazing not, if you know, Sammy something. won it. It'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Be amazing. We, it hasn't been considered. I don't think a lot of people are even, it's not even on anyone. I haven't seen it on anyone's radar. I haven't either. But everyone says he's, but everyone says, but not everyone, but a lot of people think he's going to fight Roman now at Mania. That's, so. yeah, I, I'm getting that sense. They're leaning so yeah, heavy it feels into that way. it. It yeah. feels that way. And that's why I think maybe there's something else. I mean, we're just, we're so emotionally invested in the Sammy bloodline stuff that that does deliver the best kind of main event for WrestleMania. If you're emotionally invested, I mean, that's what you saw with Daniel Bryan in WrestleMania, you know, what was it? 30, you know, in new Orleans, we were, we were so heavily invested in that story that it leads to the best moment at the end of the night. I gotta be honest. The most, the thing I'm most invested in right now in the bloodline is solo. Give me more solo. I like that every time they do something now, they give him the big spots. Like he he did the dive onto the table onto Kevin Owens. Yep. He has the spike looks so badass. I love it. They know though. Um, they know he's a main eventer. They know it. Yeah. He is. They, yeah. I've been saying so, it for weeks now. They know it. Yeah. And yeah, we'll uh, see how it goes. I just I was just, I'm just skeptical of how obvious they're making it. It's been so not obvious to this point, but maybe they're just saying, like, we know this is what you guys want. So here you go. You got uh, you got some big dirt, not big dirt for me. What do we got, man? I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. So, all right, I'll start off with the one that I knew, told you you were gonna love. So okay. WWE put out like a um, like a, a like a, a social video of WWE superstars giving predictions. Like they ask questions, and they're like making predictions about the Royal Rumble and champions for 2023. One of the questions was. Give us like your, it was like a bold prediction. Like what? what's the craziest thing that's going to happen or a bold prediction? Kofi Kingston, his prediction is that Rhea Ripley will win either the Intercontinental title or the U.S. title in 2023. I thought you were going to say that, he, that she wins uh, either the women's or the men's Royal Rumble. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, maybe. Well, maybe. Big dirt, not a big dirt. Could this be something? Uh, I'm going not big dirt because Kofi, uh, he is, uh, you know, essentially the way that uh, the basketball players, they are not the general managers. Kofi does not get to make those decisions. And I hate the idea. I know they don't have a secondary belt. Uh, maybe they should. But I hate the idea of a woman winning the Intercontinental or the U.S. title. So I'm going not big dirt. Why? Uh, because they're men's titles. Like, I I'm good with them introducing women's secondary titles. Let's do it, you know. But... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't like the idea of her winning one of them, you know. 
I mean, she fought Tozawa. I know. But but so now all of her matches. China did it. Men. China did it. Yeah, I didn't like it then either. Oh, okay. Yeah. Has anyone, no other woman's done it, right? Has won the Intercontinental title? Or a men's title? You at, didn't it? Well, 24 7, rest that in peace. Uh, and hardcore title. That doesn't count. Yeah. Um, all right. So we were talking about the pitch black match. Oh, yeah. Mountain and Dude, black LA match Knight. Out. LA Knight was on After the Bell, the Court Corey Graves' podcast. Okay. And he asked him, what, what have they told you? They said, they haven't told me much, but they say it's going to be a kick ass street fight that's kind of in the dark. That's all he <laughs> said. It's like, I'm going Big Dirt, big man. Dirt. I'm right, going Big right. Dirt because I'm very much looking forward to seeing this match in action. Uh, we all know it ends with Bray Wyatt winning in whatever fashion, but clearly there's going to be uh, you know, a lot of gaga going on there because uh, he, is, he is being reborn at Royal Rumble. All right, all right. All right, two more quickly. So MJF posted a picture with his PWI awards. Like, I think one, and one of them was match of the year. I believe it was for his match with Punk. Oh, I was there. Or one right, of, sitting right up front. One of the matches, something like that. But he taped over the the other name and it just said MJF versus MJF. Punk commented, really? Punk was in the comment, said, maybe find some tape for the ratings so no one sees those either. Boy. Big dirt, not big dirt. Yeah, oh. I'll go Big Dirt. I'll go Big Dirt. Uh, that's that's a low blow. You know, come on, Punk. You know, uh, that's that's not nice. I don't like that. I'll go All right, last one. Last one. Last one for you. We have a new authority figure on Impact Wrestling. His name is Santino Morella. As I Santino saw. Morella. And he comes out and Moose cheats to win the title. And he says, you don't kick a man in the scrotissimus region. You're a cheating son of a gun. Santino Morella back in professional wrestling. Big dirt, not a big dirt. I'm going not big dirt because I don't. It's huge dirt, Zaz. I'm going not big dirt, but I will tell you, I saw that Josh Alexander retained last night, and more importantly, Mickey James won the Knockouts Championship over Jordan Grace. You're saying those things are more important than Santino Morella being? Yes. Santino Morella is all time. Yes. Okay. If we're talking just characters. Santino Morella is all time. One of the greatest his, Intercontinental title wins ever. All what's time, Santino Morella's most famous moment? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. When he has the his quickest elimination in Royal Rumble. Oh, that's not I his wasn't most ready. famous I wasn't moment, ready. though. That's not his most famous moment, though. I like that one. His most famous moment, the Milan Miracle. Gets called out of the crowd and beats... Uh, uh, when he um, debuted. You know, what's his name for the IC title that when I keep he, referencing? When he, when he debuted. Yeah. Yeah. I like when he got crazy. eliminated by Kane immediately. And he Santino is the man. If you could, you could give me a Santino or an R Truth segment every week, and I'd be happy. That's good stuff there, Joey. Excellent job out of you, man. This was fun. Great week in Appreciate wrestling. It. We're at a great time of year, man. A couple weeks away from Royal Rumble, and then it's WrestleMania season. I, I looked at, like I said, there's some spots open in that Men's Royal Rumble. Only six guys have declared. I mean, that's you know, who wants to be in it? Does anyone want to be in who the match? Who wants it? Who wants it? Hey, you got to want it. Fill the field. Do you, I don't is know. It possible I don't know. Fill the field. I'm in. I'll be in. Good job, Joey. Say goodbye to all your friends. Tell them you'll see them next week. Hey guys, thank you so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. And thanks for being a fan. Yeah, subscribe, rate, review, like, do all that good stuff, and uh, and we'll check you out next week on it's still real to me. See ya.